Mr. Hubbard. Did you happen to notice the words Danny Simpson rules OK spray painted 15 times on the back wall this morning? Yes, indeed, Mr. Slut. Well, I want to know one thing. Who's responsible? Well, uh, I assumed it was Danny Simpson. But don't be ridiculous. He's passed two exams. He's a high flyer. And we have league tables to consider. Miss Trippy, but sure. We are not punishing Danny Simpson while there are still plenty of pupils from single parent families. <laughs> You've set up our little joint project. Yes, it's coming, and uh, if this works, I get to be in charge of school discipline. We'll see, we'll see. Yes, well, yes, did you call? It's your behaviour report form on Edward Allison, fourth year. I'm expecting your support on this, Mr Slatt. It's just getting worse and worse. Yes, under the heading behavioural problems, you have written acne. Well, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> His nose has practically disappeared. But am I to... <laughs> Understand you have reprimanded this pupil for his complexion? Absolutely. But this is not acceptable. You are aware, surely, that this boy has been designated by his psychiatrist as a serious suicide risk. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mr. Slat, haven't we all? <laughs> Mr. Slat. Will you two move along, please? There's a place for slouching around looking miserable, and that place is your classroom. Mr. Slat. <laughs> I was wondering what this piece of paper meant. What? Morning. Mr. Cockdell. I have received a number of complaints that pupils are picking up bad language in your classes. Bollocks. <laughs> if you could just keep in mind that children are inclined to repeat what they hear. Twats. <laughs> it means what it says. It doesn't say anything. By the way, Mr Slap, you ought to know the first years are feeling a bit mellow today. Well, that's good, isn't it? Well, not really. They've all been inhaling at the ventilators outside the Prefect's common room. <laughs> Am I to understand the Prefects are smoking illegal substances again? Well, it seems like it. How many of them? Uh, my first impression was that the room was on fire. <laughs> Dear God, please, not today. Today? Well, Mr Saunders went in to talk to them about uh, 20 minutes ago. Well, where is he now? Space. <laughs> OK, fine, perfect. I'll deal with them. Do all your pupils have some kind of habit? I'm sorry? Confiscated these on the way in. But every kid in the playground seems to have a pack. Eric here was first aid officer for a year, so? Yes, thank you, Janet. That will be all. He was using nicotine patches instead of Band-Aids. Most of the school, an hour and 20 a day. <laughs> I see you're wearing foundation this morning, darling. Something wrong with your razor. <laughs> Why do you stay with a guy like that? Because he's driving himself to a massive heart attack, and I'd hate myself if I missed it. Do we need quite so many pupils cluttering up the place? They'll be here any minute. Who will? Never you mind, Miss Travis. Interview panel. Janet. He and the head are up for the same new job, so the interview panel's coming here. Yes, thank you, Janet. Very good. Very discreet. Oh, why must they always look so common? Are you girls wearing makeup? No. Well, could you borrow some? <laughs> He went for a cardiogram recently. But I framed it. What are you doing here, anyway? Mr Peterson's told us to put up these pictures. <laughs> Peterson paid no attention. His wife ran off with a lesbian. <laughs> Can I have a word? Just don't touch me. You're getting an estate. Let's have a chat. I'm fine. Just don't touch me. Excuse me, Eric. No, claws off me, slut queen! Oh, Eric, please! <laughs> We're not at home now! <clears throat> oh, gentlemen. Please come in. <laughs> Welcome to, uh, to Gullfast High School. Thank you, Janet. That will be all. Are you aware that one of your downstairs rooms appears to be on fire? What? There's smoke everywhere. One of the common rooms. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's just... Yes, yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> what? It's, it's uh, on fire. The prefect's common room is burning, absolutely. Sorry for any inconvenience. For God's sake, man, haven't you phoned the fire brigade? No. Well, yes. Well, well, kind of. Kind of? We've, um, we, we faxed them. <laughs> you faxed the fire brigade? Well, it, it's only quite a small fire. It's, uh, not a fire at all. It's the science department doing an experiment. Right. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Fine. Yes, well, so long as no one's in any danger. I can assure you I've got the situation completely under control. Not that there is a situation, but I'm controlling it anyway. <laughs> I see. I understand you've set up an interview room for us. Of course, of course. This office here, I hope it's to your satisfaction. As I was coming in, I noticed you don't seem to have any ramps here. Ramps? 
don't think I know that one. We've got a couple of Chinese kids. <laughs> What I'm asking is, have you disabled children at this school? Well, a couple of times, but it was them or me. <laughs> I see. I ought to warn you, disability is a bit of an issue with a third of our party. You'll be along shortly. Thank you for your assistance. You get the job. You're out of here. I'm sold. Ah, Mr. Snap. Have they arrived yet? Not just this minute. Well, two of them. Well, then, may the better man win. Oh, thanks. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Anything of interest so far this morning? Well, the prefects are smoking illegal substances again. I see. Well, I'll head down and handle that, Mr. Slat. Sometimes these drug types just need a good chat. <laughs> Chatting can be very important for young people, you know. Look at it. There's what I call a school. A brand new science wing and practically no art department. That's not just education. That's foreplay. <laughs> Want to translate this for me? PT music department. Please take music department. There's a music teacher absent. Please take his classes. That's so difficult. I'm new here, remember? You understand what this means. I could be headmaster of this place by next month. I have a one in two chance of getting out of here forever. I'd have a school of my own. I wouldn't be working with my wife for half the year. I wouldn't even see her in daylight. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, God, I want this job. Please, God, let me have this job. I... Are you all right? I think I'm having a heart attack. I'll get your wife. No, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> Momentary lapse, that's all. Mr. Snyder. I believe you have some work to do in the music department, Miss Travis. Whatever you say. for 15 minutes. Well, I'm getting terribly, terribly impatient. I'm just warning you, I get ever so cross. Ah! Oh. Sorry. Sorry, I thought you were a pupil. <laughs> yes, 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 I'll keep holding. Let's just hope no one gets stabbed. I am just so cross, I really am. I am cross, cross, cross. You talk to them. Talk to who? They won't let him come back to school and he's still got one of our instruments. I'm sorry? One of our musical instruments. They won't let him come back. One of your pupils? Yes, yes. Well, you talk to them then. You talk to them and tell them I'm, I'm ever so cross and I'm practically stabbing people. I'm connecting you now. Oh, is that an American accent? Hello, death row. <laughs> death row? Yeah, death row. I understand there's some kind of problem. Ask for Brian Jackson. Brian Jackson? Uh, we do have a prisoner by that name. How can I help you? I was told there's some kind of emergency. Just how long has this kid been away? Look, lady, you just phoned death row. Home of the electric chair, the gas chamber, and the lethal injection. <laughs> this is where we routinely slaughter our fellow man. <laughs> Please don't tell me you got us all out of bed without a very, very good reason. Tell him we need our bassoon back. <laughs> One of your prisoners has stolen a bassoon. <laughs> I'll kill him. <laughs> Can't fault them for service. Oh, poor Brian. He was always such a quiet child. Right, sure. I'm supposed to be taking a class here. One of your music teachers is off sick. Oh, uh, oh, I see. A Mr. Bonza. Which room is it? Um, look, why don't you just pop back to the staff room and have a coffee? I'll deal with this. No, I'll take the class. It's no problem. I like music. Music room two, right? No, Susie, please. <coughs> A bit of an attendance problem, would you? Oh dear, just look at that. They must have all popped out for a moment. Popped out? So, 
There's normally a class in here, is there? Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's them. That's the class list. Amanda, nobody's used this room in years. Keep your voice down. Do you want the entire music department closed for good? Who are these kids? Well, they're, um... They're, um... I made them up. <laughs> I'm sorry? Well, no one wants to take music anymore. It's all science these days. And anyway, if you take more than one art subject, Mr. Slat tells the rugby team you're gay. <laughs> you made them up? Well, I couldn't let them close the music department, could I? Do you actually have any pupils at all? Brian Jackson. <laughs> he's left the school. He's in a different country. And he's about to be executed. Well, yes, but not in term time. <laughs> you just made them up. Clarissa Devere. Tarquin Moorcock. Gwendolyn Talwinning? Ever such a nice girl, Gwendolyn. She's going out with Quentin, who's a bit of a rascal, but he's got a heart of gold underneath. Amanda. Except, of course, Agatha has set her heart on stealing him away and has tricked him into writing a secret letter to his uncle at the Grange. Amanda, <laughs> please. This is not sane. And what about Mr Bonza? He goes along with this. We're involved. Involved? Engaged. And I don't think the man who loves me my future husband, my life's partner and soulmate, is likely to give me away, do you? I suppose not. And anyway, I made him up too. <laughs> there was a Robin Bonzer who was supposed to be coming to the school, but he never turned up. So I pretended he did. And naturally, you had to get engaged. Well, you know how it is. The rumours were bound to start. I spent hours telling everybody about him, and then one day, I got overcome and... I invited everybody to the wedding. Except the groom, on account of the fact he doesn't exist. I'm getting a bit worried about that, actually. <laughs> When's the wedding? Well, it'll have to be quite soon. I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's OK. I don't think it's a pupil. Right. Yes. Not down here, anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, can I use this cupboard? For what? Mr Humboldt. Mr Humboldt, what's happening? I can't hear you. The interview is about to start. Please re-establish radio contact. You know what I'll do if you fail me now, Humboldt. Mr Humboldt! Uh, sorry, Mr Slap. Momentary hitch. All fixed now. It had better be any mistakes and I'll finish you, Humboldt. What does he mean? I promise you won't tell him you found me. Is he blackmailing you? I presume you have all the appropriate texts to hand. Uh, yes, yes, no problem. It's just that if there's any questions about education acts or policies or whatever, <laughs> there's no harm in it. He's cheating! What an example to set to the children. Gwendolyn, cover your ears. <laughs> Are you going to tell him? He'll finish me. He'll get me thrown out. Yeah, but how? Are you going to tell him you found me? It depends what I'm helping to cover up. Fine. Great. Thank you very much. Hey, wait! Look, I just don't want to see that bastard get away with it, that's all. He's blackmailing you, right? 